As many of you know, this is the 30th anniversary of UFC 1 back in 1993. So over the course of this year in select cities, we're going to sort of pay tribute to a lot of the individuals that comprise the very fabric of the UFC. And given the fact that we have a UFC middleweight championship set to headline here at UFC 287, a lot of our athletes that you're going to see today uh, have made a lot of history in the UFC's middleweight division. So we will open it up to questions from the media and fans later, but I want to introduce our star athletes at this time. First up to the stage today, he is a former UFC light heavyweight champion. Many of you fondly remember the Machida era, a man who really revitalized karate and its employment in the UFC. Please welcome the dragon, Lyoto Machida. Also in the building with us, fresh off of a big win at Game Bread Boxing last weekend. This man was the phenom way before Raul Rosas Jr. He won the UFC Heavyweight Tournament at UFC 12 back in 1997. And what he did in 2013 in Brazil, one of the greatest calendar years in MMA history. You know who he is, Vitor Belfort. All right, next athlete to the stage, one of the more popular fighters on this active roster, top to bottom. What he did in ending the reign of Anderson Silva will withstand the test of time. He is the former UFC middleweight champion, the All-American, Chris Weidman. All right, our last individual to grace us with his presence today. If you have a Mount Rushmore and mixed martial arts, You've got a slot reserved for this man, the decorated former welterweight and UFC middleweight champion of the world, George Rush St. Pierre. All right, well, this is an absolute thrill for not just you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> what an absolute honor to have four great former UFC champions with us here today. We have microphones set up right, left, and center. Before I get to the media and my man, Jose, I just want to uh, chop it up with you, man, just for a minute. Lyoto, it's been a while, man. For those that haven't been tracking your every move, what have you been up to over the last couple years? So, it's a long time uh, away from UFC, but now I'm back in different scenario. So I'm so happy to be here among those guys and to share some good stuff with you guys. Thank you so much. And then, of course, to his right, Vitor Belfort. Little black eye after the big win last weekend. Congratulations, man. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here with you guys, with these legends here. So many history, and we're going to have some fun tonight. I hope you guys today. So hopefully to answer some questions and enjoy this ride here with you guys. And good to have the whole Belfort family backstage with us today. And Chris Weidman, I believe, was drinking on the way-in show this morning, but he sobered up. It's good to see you, brother. Yeah, I got a little bit of a hangover right now, but I'll, I think I'll get through it, thanks to some uh, mojitos. But yeah, I'm excited to be here. It's an honor to be on stage with these guys, true legends of the sport. And uh, yeah, it should be a fun time. And of course, the inimitable George Rush St. Pierre, the relationship you have with this fan base is pretty special, and I gotta imagine it feels pretty good, gives you chills to be back with these fight fans. Man, thanks for the, it's good to feel the love. You know, guys, thank you so much. They, I really appreciate it. All right, well, we got about 30 minutes, so feel free to grab a microphone. Don't be shy, we don't have any tickets, we can't do any photos, but we are here for you for the next 30 minutes. Jose Youngs, take it away. A uh, quest for George St. Pierre. Obviously, I think people would assume you would be on a panel with the greatest welterweights of all time, but you're here with the middleweight, so I'm curious, do you consider yourself a middleweight now that your career is over? Uh, no, I, I, uh, I always thought of myself being a, a, uh, a welterweight, and even I think I could have gone to 155, you know, nowadays I look, my training partner that, that fight at, as a, at 155, they're just as big as me, and I've never been a big fan of cutting weight, uh, I did it basically because everybody uh, does it, but I, I was always uh, more concerned about my health than my performance. So I think it's, you know, if you, if you can perform good without cutting weight, I think it's always better, you know? And questions for all the cha former champions on the stage. Obviously, on Saturday, Israel is going to look to defeat a guy that's 3-0 and against him. A lot of people consider Alex his boogeyman, the one that follows him throughout his career. So I'm curious, was there a fighter or a training partner or someone that maybe followed you throughout your careers that you just didn't really particularly care to get matched up with each time? Oh, George, I'll start with you. There, there, there was a, a few, actually, especially in jiu-jitsu. 
there were guys that were uh, I don't know their style you know styles makes fight makes makes fight there, there were some guys normally in jiu-jitsu I'm, I'm doing very well with guys that are that that rely more on athleticism because I can match them but guys that are more that are not so athletic but they are, they are extremely technical I have the tendency to have a hard time with these guys and and John Danaro had a few students that give me a really really a hard time I used to call them call call them my worst nightmare you know we can go down the line if you want Chris, yeah, Chris. I, I don't really have anybody that I could think of off the top of my head that is like someone that we've gone back and forth with and I got you know like it's just a tough matchup I always wanted that Rockhold fight back you know that's my first loss that's the one I always wanted back but that that, that wasn't able to happen um, you know, obviously I've had some tough losses, so there's guys that matchup law, matchup wise didn't work out for me. But it, like I can't think of like a a guy where we went back and forth on it just wasn't a good matchup for me. Vitor. Yeah, as in training, Carson Gracie team was very hard. So it's like a, it's, you have a hard time every day. So it was so many. Thank you, thank you for the love. So I'm always training myself, compete myself with the best, and. Like I say, fighters are typical. The hardest ones are the ones that you never forgot. But when I was young, growing up in Carson, I got beat up every day. So that's what made me tough. So it's always in training, it's hard sometimes because especially when you have a fight coming up because you cannot win every session of training. So sometimes you have a, some guys that is lighter than you, but because of the training, because of the you're tired, so sometimes they can beat you up and it's a part of the training. You can just forget that and focus on the day of the fight. And, and, and if I may add something, there, there's a lot of guys who are very good in the gym, but when it, the lights are on and it's time to compete, they, they freeze, you know what I mean? To be successful in this game, I mean, in, in, in combat sport is, you need to be good when it counts, when it matters. And that's something that it's not everybody that, 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 can, that can do that, you know? And then one final one for everyone on stage. Uh, do you have a prediction or any thoughts on the main event between Alex Pereira and Israel Adesanya? I, I am biased. I'm, I'm friend with Adesanya, and I, and I think this time he's going to get it. Chris Wadman, who wins the main event? Man, it is a really tough fight. It's probably the worst matchup for Adesanya, but Adesanya is the better mixed martial artist. On paper, you gotta go with Adesanya, just based on, I think he's better in every category of mixed martial arts, but the power of, Ad of Pereira is insane, bro. His left hook is crazy. But I think if Adesanya is able to keep that distance, you know, just hit him and keep his feet moving, I think he got this fight. Vitor, who do you like Saturday? Yes. Uh... His styles are very, comp so I, I just feel like Arasanya is the better mixed martial artist, but Pereira come in as such an incredible preparation. He has Glover Teixeira with him, a guy who knows jiu-jitsu, boxing, and I feel like he got in the head a little bit of Arasanya, and it's gonna be an emotion fight, but I mean, Pereira is so cold, like he's so, like a killer. Yeah. And if the, the, the chance for his sign is on the ground, standing up, I don't see a chance. So it's going to be a very interest. But I mean, with little gloves, you get hit right here on the tempo. It's hard to recover. So Pereira can put his punching combination together. I think it will be a tough fight for his son. But I mean, both guys are tough. It's 50-50. Yeah. But that's my prediction. Leoto, what do you think, my man? So I don't want to be biased, even though I'm Brazilian and I'm a friend of uh, Pereira, but I put all my money on Pereira because I already trained so many times with him and I know how difficult he is. He's so, he knows the distance really good and everything that he does is through conscious. No, no, just by instinct. Because who knows Pereira knows that he does everything. If he moves to the side, he knows why he's moving to the side. It's not randomly moving. Then I put all my money on Pereira, for sure, man. I, I, I want to hear from the crowd. Who's got Adesanya? Make some noise. Okay. Who's got Pereira? Make some noise. Pretty even. Oh, yeah. Pretty even. Pretty even. Pretty even. Damn. All right, let us go to the right here. What do you have, sir? 
Oi, bom dia, meu irmão. Como vai você? Oh. I got one question. We all talk about all the fighters that are really good inside the ring. Can you name one of your training partners or someone inside the gym that never transitioned to, to the UFC that was very, very, very good? There is one. Uh, uh, my coach, Firas Zahabi. And trust me, he, he, I truly believe he would have done, if he would have competed, he would have done very, very well in mixed martial art. However, he always been more uh, cerebral, more, uh, you know what I mean? More, uh, do, what is the word? Uh, it's more a coach than a fighter. Yeah, more a coach. He's a, he's a, he was always the guy that we turned to when we needed to seek some advice. So I think he chose that path for that reason. But I, I think that if he would have chose to, to make a career out of it, he would have done pretty well. Yeah, for me, the biggest beast I've ever seen in the room his name is Ray Longo. You guys, ah. ever, you guys ever seen him before? He decided to stay as a coach. Yeah. Thank God, because the heavyweight division would be in some serious problems. Knocks people out. Anytime he used to spar people, they would just be dropped immediately in the first round. And so, uh, but he wanted to, you know, just save the world brain cells. Right. So he decided not to engage. And he stayed just as focused as a coach. And he's done some amazing things. Ah. Vito, what do you have? So we, we had a, when, when I was young in Carson Grace, we had a lot of fighters, but I had one fighter, Ricardo Liborio. So Liborio for me is one of the greatest guy. And, and if we would have transitioned, he would be <laughs> crazy. So good. So I have a guy that it was a long time ago. He used to fight in UFC as well. He does pretty good in training. His name is uh, Vladimir Matyushenko. He's a beast, man wrestling but I don't know what reason but every time when he competes he competes well but when you have a high challenge difficult challenge you know he he could go further but he he didn't he didn't go but I don't know why because when he when it comes to competition it's involved a lot more aspect emotional aspect technical aspect you no know, so many things you have put together at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll go over here. What do you have, sir? Go ahead, my man. Yes, sir. Yo, man, I'm a nobody. My name's Mel. I just want to know if anybody miss weight, John, if you could pass on the message. Yo, I fill in for them, you feel me? Let Dana know what's up. I train, I do Muay Thai. I'm more than willing to hold pads for any of you guys on stage. Everywhere I go, I always got my pads and my gloves, bro. I've been down here traversing the world, teaching in Mexico and in Miami, and I'm just trying to teach more and learn more and possibly step up in this arena one day. But you know the vibes, man. Shout out to Miami, you already know what it is. And George, do a free wrestling seminar, George. Come on, man. I'm trying to be great. And Vito, yo, you smooth in that suit, cuz. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You, you, you speak like you rapping. Can you rap? No, I'm telling you, if y'all put me in this shit, it'd be like Mike Tyson mixed with The Rock. If you smell with The Rock, I'm telling you, I'm turning up, y'all. I love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. What's your name? You got to tell everybody your name. So my full name is Jamel Simpson. Ooh, yeah. I speak Spanish, too. Yeah. Hola, entendes mucho, habla poco. Mucho cervezas es bueno. Dos chicas, oh, diablo. Que fue? Um, Yo, but um, no, seriously, man, I'm telling you, I'm ready for this shit. Big time, big stage, you know what I'm saying? Let's work, let's do this shit. Jamel Simpson's my name, man. Yo, Muay Thai's my game, but I don't wrestle me, because if you try to wrestle me, I'm going for an ankle pick straight up. I'm breaking legs, I'm gonna just be real, bro. I'm not doing that. Jamel Simpson, oh, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Wait, 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 wait. last thing, last thing. This is my man right here, man, Mike. He gonna, he gonna ask you more questions? No more questions, man, no more questions, no more photos, man. That's it, you gotta talk to my man. This question is for uh, George. Um, George, I've been uh, training for since I was uh, five years old. I've been uh, a role model of your, uh, your, you've been my biggest role model. Do you have any advice for an up and coming fighter per se? Well, I, the advice for me is you need to choose what you love to do in life, not what your parent want for you, your friend. What, what do you want to do? Once you figure that out, that's a big step already. Once you figure that out, do it for yourself. And if you do it because you love it, you know, it's playful, it's fun, normally you'll get better at it and hopefully, you know, you put on the work and it will take off. All right. Thank you.
Thank you. All right, back to the middle. Yes, sir. Free class. Hey, guys. Daniel Charbonneau from TSN 690 in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, naturally, I have some questions for George. Uh, George, there's a little rumor that during fight week you may have had a dinner with Adesanya, and I'm curious if you gave him any advice uh, during that time. No, I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't in Miami uh, this week. I was. Uh, I was in Montreal. I just arrived uh, last night. But uh, yeah, I'm sure he, he doesn't need my advice. I'm sure he's gonna do pretty well. <laughs> awesome. I wish I, him the best. I heard you've been spending a bit of time at Silver Tooth MMA. Um, I'm just curious if uh, if. Well, what, what, uh, sorry, what pushes you to keep training and improve your techniques uh, years after retirement? Well, I, I, I do not train for performance now, even though I, it's, there's friendly competition in the gym, you know, I always enjoy that. I train for longevity. I train because for me, it's a therapy. It allows me to be a better person. That's why I'm doing it. Amazing. And last question uh, for our Montrealers back home. Where's your favorite place to get a poutine? And for the, other, for the other guys, would you ever be interested in trying a poutine, which is french fries, gravy, and cheese? Yeah, I'm not sure if they, they, they would like it, but, but uh, yeah, but the best poutine is, if you go to Quebec City, it's called Ashton or Montreal La Banquise. That's right. Thanks so much, guys. He was ready to go with that answer right there. All right, go ahead. A quick question for the GOAT, George. Uh, I saw you Wednesday at TriStar and I just wanted to know, can we roll together? <laughs> Let's do it next time, no problem. Hell yeah, <laughs> see you next week. <laughs> Go ahead, man. All right, my question is for all you champs up here. Respectfully, who hit the hardest and who hit the softest, guys? <laughs> Leota, why don't we start with you. Of all your opponents, who, who hit the hardest and maybe who didn't hit so? It's, it's hard to say because every time when I got some punch, I pass out, man. <laughs> it's hard to say that. But I can say that the tricky opponent that I have was John Jones because he could change the game in the middle of the game, you know? The moment that he, he figured out that he could do anything on some part of the fight, he can go to another part and finish the fight. That's fair, that's fair. Who hit the hardest? Oh my God, so many. I got hit one time by a boxer. Uh, I was I was fighting Tank Abbott. I sparred with this guy who, who was a Tyson sparring partner, and I was for five minutes up talking, but I just came back and then they say you're talking about popcorn. So I was all over the place. <laughs> I was for five minutes out. It was the hardest hit I ever took in my whole entire life. Well, I, I'm sitting next to two guys that I was in the octagon with, and both of them hit me pretty damn hard. Uh, Leota Machida threw body kicks like I've never felt before. It was the craziest <laughs> damn thing. He's in that southpaw position. He's supposed to just be a karate fighter, and then it's like the hardest kick of all time. And then Vitor with his damn boxing, you know, barrage of punches, hits like a freaking truck. So, I mean, I'm sitting next to these two guys, and I remember, you know, getting hit pretty damn hard by them. Uh, and then, obviously, you got to go into some of the knock. Yo Romero, I mean, the flying knee was pretty damn hard. That's a must. You That's know, a must. And, and we are in the 305, so <laughs> salute. The person that hit me the hardest, I think it's Carlos Condit. And I'm going to explain to you why. At one point in, one of, in my fight with him, I was standing up. I saw him coming in going to the left and I followed him and then something happened I I I I I, I was I was out and I ended up on my butt I was like shit I miss I'm missing like a split second or something so that means it hit pretty hard you know when you don't feel it that's mean that mean you hit pretty hard respect champs thanks guys thank you man we'll go back to the middle now my man go ahead yeah a question for Lyoto um, I don't believe you've retired, so I just wanted to get a career update, like where are you at um, and you know, what's, what's going on with your fighting career? So, I train pretty much every day because I like to train. It's a part of my life. Martial arts is in my blood. But, we never know. I'm, I train with those young guys and I do sparring like at least once a week and I feel good. But for a while, for now, I don't have any, any offer, so I prefer just to 
keep training and do what I like to do, what I love to do. But would you want to fight again at some point? Yes, yes, I would like to fight at least one more time, you know. Who knows, can be the farewell or something like that. Maybe in the UFC. We never know, UFC is, a, is my, my home and I love to be here. And I love the crowd, I love the people. And thank, thank you. And uh, just uh, one question for all the panel. Most of you guys fought Anderson Silva and it was announced that he's joining the UFC Hall of Fame. Just a reaction, any words on his career and obviously another uh, former UFC middleweight champion. Chris, you wanna start us on the Anderson Silva stuff? Yeah, I mean, obviously if there's someone that deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, it's Anderson Silva. I think it's a guy that we all, you know, looked up to, especially for me, I was a little bit younger of a generation, but he's like, he was like a mythical figure. Um, well, being able to share the octagon with him is, you know, a true blessing, and I was honored to do it. And he brought so much to the table. You know, it wasn't just his technical, you know, attributes, it was his, the mental side of it, the way he, you know, make you feel like there's nothing you could do to him. And no matter what you hit, what hit him with, you know, he was still there and looking at you like that, nothing hurt him. Uh, the guy was truly, uh, you know, just great for the sport. And so him retiring and moving on and, uh, you know, doing his thing is bo in boxing is pretty awesome. And to see that the UFC is honoring him with, you know, being in the Hall of Fame is pretty cool to see. Pete Tor, any thoughts on Anderson Silva's induction? Yeah, you got what you deserve. No one deserved more than Anderson, what he put in the sport, what we represent. So was one of the, the champions that I shared the octagon with it. So. Like, I love when I see when people recognize and something that you don't pick yourself. So someone picked for, but no one deserved more than him. So congrats for Anderson and his family. And Lyoto, I'd imagine a lot of respect for your fellow Brazilian, Anderson Silva, as well. Oh, yeah. Anderson Silva, we trained together a couple times, but we never had opportunity to, to do a camp together. No, but he's a legend. He's, I consider, one of the best in this sport. And of course, for George St. Pierre, so much of your career was spent answering questions about this man. Your thoughts on Anderson? And Anderson is probably the best whoever, whoever do it. You know, he's just incredible. Uh, I mean, he fought like he was in the Matrix. You know, he's got the best highlight in UFC. I think, uh, yeah, it's, uh, he deserves it more than anybody. All right, we're going to go back over here. Looks like this man just got off the uh, golf course. What do you have, sir? Hey, I'm just here to say hi to my <laughs> dear friend, Vitor Belfort. If you guys don't know, his son just signed a football scholarship with Virginia Tech. Shout out to Davi who, Belfort, who loves one of the football quarterbacks in this country. And one, one last thing, he just had a birthday, April 1st, so we could all give a big hat. Let's go, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Vitor. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. And I need some autographs. If I can get some autographs? Uh, perhaps later on, my man, okay? Thank you. All right, let us go back over here to the left. Go ahead, brother. Hey, everybody. Jake Long from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. What's up, Miami? Hey, quick question for everybody. Um, what is next for you? Congratulations to Phenom on his boxing victory. Chris Weidman, we haven't seen you in quite a long time. When are you getting back in that octagon? I know, uh, Leoto, you just told us what you had, you know, what you're expecting. You want to get a fight, get another back in the ring. And GSP, what's next? I'm, I'm more, I'm busier than I than I was when I was fighting. So I, a lot of things. Uh, I have a vodka that comes out pretty soon. I got a, you know, movie project. So yeah, I'm. It's all good. I, I, I'm more busy than I, than I was when I was fighting. Yeah, obviously, I, if you didn't know, uh, about two years ago, almost two years ago, I broke my leg in that fight with uh, Uriah Hall. So recovering from that has been a freaking a mission. And uh, I'm pretty much at the tail end of it, and I'm excited to get back in the octagon probably sometime this summer. And Vitor, we were all watching last weekend. Congratulations on, on a Thank big you. win over Jacare So. Thank you, yeah, it was a great match. And as you guys know, the Paul brothers, I'm willing to fight both at the same night. We can do three rounds, we won, three, uh, I, can, I can go, no, no, no worries. But they, they've been ducking me forever. So I would love to fight real fighters, like Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz. They have great boxing, that would be a great fight for me. 
And Roy Jones Jr. picked Anthony Pettis, Anthony Pettis won. And now he's asking for Anderson Silva, stop ducking me. You guys got to come for Belfer. I'm an old fella. I'm old. So, and boxing is my skill. So I, I love what I do and it's a passion. And I'm ready to go. Ready to go at any time. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Leoto, you thought about boxing at all? I want to try one day, you know, because I train everything you know, for MMA. If I have a chance to fight in boxing, that would be good too, because I want to test my skills in box. That'd be completely different than MMA for sure. Maybe we get an offer for Leoto Machida next week. All right, back over here to stage left. What do you have, sir? All right, hey everybody, uh, my name's Manny. Uh, follow up on that question about hard hitters. Now, what did you all do, or what strategies did you use to sort of um, stay composed and continue fighting in an effective manner? You gotta get hurt first. You ever tried to get hit? Oh yeah, I've been hit. You're only gonna know when you get hit. So what you do, what you know, but you have to prepare yourself. So it's a lot of training, like like ways of training that you prevent you train your brain to assimilate the knockout. But I mean, trying to don't get hit because when you get hit, that's when you see what's happening. There was one thing that we did in training to try to emulate it, but it, it's hard to emulate that. Um, we would, my coach would have us spin in a circle as fast as we possibly can, and then you go right into hitting pads or sparring with somebody light. I think that was probably the best way for us to try to figure out a way to simulate what, what's going to happen in a fight if we get rocked. Um, I mean, for me, it's important. If you don't want, you talk about hard hitters. To, if you if you spar or you fight someone who hit harder than you was, was known to hit very hard, it's important to don't stay in front of him. Always be in movement. You know, always, 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 always. Of course, you plant your feet when you hit, but then when you finish, you move, move, move. The reason is very simple. Let's say you have a sniper. What is the easiest target? The person if for a sniper, someone who doesn't move or someone if someone moves, it's hard because he's moving. Same thing in fighting. A fighter that moves is a fighter that does not get hit. And if you want to have a, a long, a, a good longevity in this game, it's important to move your legs, your legs, your legs, and your legs. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, back to the center. Go ahead. Pergunta pro Vitor pro Lioto. Vou falar em português. Vocês podem responder em inglês para a galera entender aqui. Vocês dois são dois dos maiores representantes que tivemos na, podemos dizer, primeira safra do MMA brasileiro, né? na popularização do esporte no país. Tem tido uma renovação natural. Hoje, Alex Poatan, Gilbert Burns, Amanda Nunes, Charles do Broncos. Queria que vocês falassem como é que vocês enxergam essa, podemos dizer, nova safra, a, revo, a reformulação dos lutadores brasileiros para continuar fazendo com que a MMA cresça cada vez mais no país. É, yeah, so, talking about. Uh how the cycle of fighting in Brazil. So me and Lyoto coming from the, 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 the beginning of the safra. So I think it's very important to make fighting part of our, our, our culture. And I think Brazil, you know, one thing that doesn't have in Brazil, they have in America and Canada is the support of the gyms and support of the, 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 the investors. So I think Brazil with if we have more investing in, in especially promoters, events, Brazil is always gonna be a place where you either play soccer or you become a fighter. So fighting is being a big thing of Brazil. The, the, the Brazilian people, they fight. It's, it's, a, it's a country that have that in the nature. So it's a third world country, but I mean, we have one of the best fighters in Brazil and I always believe we're gonna have a lot of great coaching it's just the infrastructure. You just got to get better every time. And I think we're in a good season right now. I believe that you have, you need more support in, in our country. You know, you have to have more events. It's more events that can like uh, launch the guys to the world. But it's hard because uh, sometimes we don't have that, but it's, everyone has to do their own. No, you have to go to your own, you have to come to the United States, you have to open your own chance, your own possibility. But that, that's the sport, you, ha you cannot complain that. We just have to accept everything and forget and move and go, go further than you can. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Back over here, go ahead. Saludo a todos. 
Hi, my name is Gabriel Lopez. I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. I, first of all, I wanted to thank the UFC for such a stack card in Miami 305. <laughs> Second of all, I have two questions. Uh, as you can see, I heard my hand training well, well this past week. I see some of the four best former title champions and challengers and you guys have seen to have the most longevity throughout the, your UFC and career path. What type of suggestions or something you guys do? I see uh, George does ice bath on other things. And what do you uh, can, can like tell everyone else to follow and do it as well so you could get a more longevity to the sport? That would be my first question. You want to take that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's proven uh, that one of the, the best thing you can do for, to, to increase your longevity is, is exercise. But it's not only to work hard, it's to work smart. I see guys sometime in the gym, they leave their career in the gym. They, they, get, they get into wars every day inspiring and they, they leave their career in the gym. So you need to not only train hard, but train smart. It's more important. So that's one thing I can tell you and advice, train smart. Don't train hard, train smart. Yeah, one of the other things I, I try to tell people who are up and coming uh, that they should focus on for longevity is strength and conditioning. Don't, you know, don't avoid the weight room. I, it, like compared to jujitsu, kickboxing, wrestling, it's, it's kind of boring, it's not as competitive. I never was like super into it and I feel like I paid for it because strength and conditioning really helps just like the, all that weight on your joints just helps strengthen your joints and just help you stay healthier throughout your career. So I think st sticking with strength and conditioning during your camps and throughout your fight career is going to help you stay, stay in the sport longer. So longevity, I'm approving of that. You know, I started at a very young age. I remember 1996 was my first fight in UFC. And I'm 46 and I didn't lose speed. I didn't lose power. And the problem I think with society is like, everybody wants to retire everybody. And I live in Florida, it's one of the best places for retirement. So I think the key, I'll, I'll be honest with everybody, stay out of sugar, quit alcohol. That's the two things that will kill your aging. And I mean, that's the two things fighters love after the fight. So, but I mean, I challenge my kids, my, treat, my kids don't eat sugar. You know, they hope they never touch alcohol because they give you pleasure at the moment. But I mean, I know, but so, some people like it, they cannot avoid, but that's why they're not gonna make it. You cannot have longevity and performance at a high level if you are into these two categories. So I think it's like the worst thing for your life. It is sugar, like bad sugar, and alcohol. That, that will age you fast. So, like everybody said here, it's very true, but for me, it's uh, so many things together. No, you cannot just, you have to have a good food, you have to do a mobility, you have to work on your strength, you have to work on your technique because you can save you know, your body, you can save energy when you have a good technique. So, so many things together, but it's hard to say just one thing or other thing, you know, I think to have a, a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle. You have to have a different lifestyle. Excellent, my second question is to the GOAT, George St. Pierre. I know 16 years ago, you had a really tough battle with Macera, and actually, 16 years ago today, that was it. That was the fight. Now, Israel Desanya is coming back after just a small layoff. Just a couple months ago, he got knocked out by Alex Pereira. What would you tell him just coming to this fight? What did your motivation do to perform in the next couple months? And we see that you beat Koscheck right after that battle. So what would you tell him? I think one of the biggest mistakes when someone f fights a a another person is trying to do, is trying, if, if he tried to do his, if he tried to use his anger, his emotion, that might be a mistake. I think it's important to focus on the objective, not the subjective. It's very important. And, and the difference is, if you focus on the objective, only on the things that you can control, not the, not the thing that you don't have control for. For example, am I gonna lose or win? You don't control that. What people gonna think about me? You don't control that. What my opponent is doing? You don't control that. 
Just focus on the thing that you need that you that you can control. And by doing so, he knows what he needs to do to, to, to get the job done. Focus on that and clear your mind on, of all the BS around it. Just focus on what you need to do and you, just by doing this, you, you slip the huds in your favor. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, man. Back over here. Hey, how's it going? Oh, all right. I can hear myself. This, this question is for George. It's about one of your other passions and what everyone's here to hear us talk about. Allez, Dinosaurs! Let's hear it. All right. So the question is, your top three pound-for-pound pound dinosaur species and why? Well, I... I <laughs> That, I don't know if... <laughs> number one, dr Dromiosaur. I think they're the number one. All the Dromiosaur. Number two, I would say... <laughs> I feel so ridiculous now. Is nobody un probably understand what I'm talking about. It's a Dromiosaur. Dr a dromiosaur, you, you, you guys all seen Jurassic Park, the, the raptors. The Dromiosaur are the family of do that kind of dinosaur. So I think the Dromiosaur, they're... they're for dinosaur perspective, they're very smart. They're, they're, they have a lot of weapon, claws, uh, teeth. They, some of them could fl glide and land on their on their prey. So I think they're the, the number one. And, and if I go, that's for the predatory animal. Then for the uh, herbivore, I would say ankylosaurs. All the ankylo ankylosaurs, it's like a turtle-like dinosaur with a, a hammer at the tail. So it could defend itself very well. So there you go. You have it. What Thank about, you. What about Barney? Barney, you remember Barney? Barney is a T Tyrannosaurus is very good too. T Rex is bone crushing uh, bite power, so he's, he's right up there. Brontosaurus, what do you think? Brontosaurus is big, you know, he's big, but till the time he gets to that size, sometimes he doesn't make it. Most of, most, of, most of it doesn't make it. Always prepare that George St. Pierre, right? What do you have, sir? What's going on, guys? What's going on, my MA? This question is for Vitor Belford. You've been through every single inception of the UFC. Uh, your first fight was 1996. Your first fight in the UFC was 1997. Every single inception, uh, what is the next level or where does the UFC go? You've been, through, uh, you've been fighting win at the very beginning. What's the next step in the evolution of mixed martial arts? Uh, I think UFC is doing everything better than anybody. You know, they're doing a very good job. They're creating the landscape. I think I can see UFC become like the NFL, to, like they're getting so big and so awesome. Like and to see everyone works is a company that, that they're trying to keep the people here. And I wish they can have like the retirement, you know, like a, you know, like for the master division. I think they can do a lot of stuff. But I mean, they do it so great. You see, they, the, the the events are amazing. The fighters are just getting better and better and better. So it's, it's seen that, you know, just not just the event, but the sport itself, just the sport become a sport, not just entertaining. It's great to see the entertaining fact, but I love to see the sport, the fighter, the retirement, how they can become more wise and save more money. They can have a retirement for the fighters. I, I love when I see a sport like tennis, basketball, football, like being here is a reunion because I know not just what he goes through, what his wife goes through, what his kids go through, what his kids, the sacrifice we all make here. So sometimes you guys see us as a warrior, like, a, like, a, like in the Coliseum, but they have, fight, they have family, they have life. So I want to see fighters become more, start of buying gold and chain, invest your money, become smart, because it's very important. It's not going to last forever, but I'd be very smart to the fighters to be able to create a retirement, and I think UFC is doing a great job to creating platforms for fighters to become a speaker. And so I think UFC has done a great job. Awesome. And one more question. You guys are a part of one of the best divisions, the middleweight division. Uh, besides you four guys, Evan Tanner, Merle Bustamante, Anderson Silva, the greatest uh, and the who's who has fought in the middleweight division. What fighters are on your radar that could uh, do big things as you guys have done in the middleweight division? Uh, I think all of, all of, like, like Jordan was saying, when you put your mind into it and you train, you prepare, you do the right things, I think anybody that has the, it's like a talent can take you there, but the effort, I believe in effort. Effort can make you a champion. So 
whoever, whatever fighters put the effort, they can achieve anything they want. Yeah, I think it just comes down to passion. It's hard to really look at the talent and figure it out because a lot of times talent is just not enough at all. Um, everyone's talented at this stage of the game. So you need someone who's super passionate and obsessed with being the best in the world. And that guy has the best chance of, you know, being a champion. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. We got about five more minutes. So if you haven't lined up already, uh, I would discourage you from doing so. Yes, young man, what do you have? Uh, this is a question for George. Um, there have been rumors this week about a possible grappling match between you and Khabib. Would you be open to that in the future? Woo, I like that. <laughs> Well, it, there's always rumor. Um, I, I have not heard of anything, you know, but uh, yeah. Listen, my, my days of serious competition are over, but you never say never to, you know, if it's well done, maybe for a good cause, money goes to charity and, and you know, I would maybe I would, I would compete again, you know, if, but, but not to prove that not tr to trying to be the strongest man in the world. This, I have no interest of, of doing it anymore, but for a grappling event, maybe something like this, uh, I ne never say never, you know? Okay, thank you so much. And I just want to say, George, you are a legend. I love you. You are the greatest of all time. Thank you. Thank you, man. Go ahead. Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. Shout out Miami, Florida. Um, so first of all, for all of you guys on the panel, I was wondering, if you guys were all in your prime right now, who would you fight in your, in your respective divisions? So that he wants to know, if you were in your fighting prime right now, who would you want to fight? I guess at either welterweight or middleweight. Well, uh, for me, I would, you know, for a fighter, I, I, you know, I speak for myself, but I'm sure you, you guys share the same thing. For a fighter, sometimes the most exciting things to do is the scariest thing. So for me, I would want to fight the best, you know, if I would be in my prime. Because I want, to be, I want it to be the best, so I would want to fight the best. Yeah, same. I mean, you just want the biggest challenges, so whoever's the champ, that's who you want. Same. If you want to become the greatest, you have to find the greatest. You are defined up how many victories you have is what your opponents. That's what, how you define yourself, so. Yeah, once you, you always looking for, for the best, because at the end of the day, it is a mind game, you know? You want to be the best. If you want to be the best, you want to fight the best. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Hi. Um, given that all of you have, have had such lengthy careers, how is your training in or outside competition significantly different? Like, what are some standout elements that today would be so different than when your career started? Leo, you want to start with that one? I know you said you're training every day still, but what was your training like in training camp versus some of the other training? Off season. Off season. Yeah. So it's when you in off season, it's different because everything is fun. No, you're training. You don't have like you you don't have to follow this schedule. For example, if you train two days very strong, the other day you can rest. But sometimes when you're in camp, in your own season, you don't have that choice. You have just have to go. You have to go like for five rounds. You have to do like uh, weight training, strength training, everything. You don't have choice. But when you're in off season, you have to maintain, you have to keep your shape. But you, sometimes you, you have the option, no? Is there something you're doing differently now than you did when your career first started? Oh, totally different. No. Yeah. Now I do what I want to do. I do what I feel like comfort for me. But of course, sometimes I go to the gym and try to test myself, test the water, and see how I am now. No, but in terms of training, I do most of the time what I like to do, what I feel comfortable to do. What, when I don't get hurt, you no know, stuff that I get hurt, sometimes I don't train too much because I don't need, I don't have a fight coming up. Yeah. Yes, I think it's lifestyle. So you gotta understand that, you know, we have seasons. You're not gonna wear no shirt in a cold season. So I think fighters have to understand that. I think where fighters, athletes get hurt the most, studying longevity, it's in the weight room. You know, we get big and strong. So. I'm a big believer in get pliable. You, you gotta, strength is different than being big and strong. Mm -hmm. So it's like throwing a, we are throwing athletes. We, we punch, we, we, we don't push weights. We, we, it's, it's not, this is not CrossFit. Yeah. This is fighting. So it gets, you have to focus in skills 
and how can you produce your strength in your movement. So if I can go back, I would do everything different. But I cannot go back, so I can only go forward. So I create uh, a fitness called Belfort Fitness Lifestyle. So everything that I learn through my life, I like to share with people. So everything is forward. We are forward motion person. So we have to train more the back part of our body than the front part of our body. So I call, you know, our strength is not on the front, it's on the back. So it's in your glute, it's in your hamstring. So if I can go back, I would do everything in the weight room differently. Uh, but I mean, I hope going forward, fighters understand that philosophy that I need to be skillful and have strength and mobility, flexibility, and learn to eat and drink right. I think that's, that's, that's the key. One thing I feel like really evolved oh, since I started my career was when I first started, it was like almost a prideful thing how much weight guys would gain after a fight. It was like, oh, look, how, look what I'm eating and, you know, going overboard. And I would jump on the bandwagon too. Like, you know, Matt Serra was my coach, right? So I got to see him. He's, his weight used to just fly up. Like, it was insane. Like, as much pizza as possible. <laughs> but as the sport evolved, we became more uh, of like a professional athlete. You want to take care of your body all year long. You know, you ramp it up during a training camp, of course. But you want to try to keep a healthy lifestyle as long as possible for longevity. But for a long time, that was not a thing. I feel like GSP might have been one of the first guys to really yeah. eat healthy for an extended period of time. It's all about balance. <laughs> I, 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 I don't eat so healthy, trust me. I, I, I think it's all about balance. Um, for me, if I could go back in time and talk to a younger, younger self, I would tell myself to train less. Because I, 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 I did not give myself enough time to recuperate sometime, and I had some stupid injuries because of it. When I was in training camp, because when you're in training camp, you try to recreate uh, the situation of your fight. Therefore, you try to put yourself in a very uncomfortable situation, outside of your comfort zone. So normally I train in a gym, we have fun when I'm off season, you know, with, with, with my regular training partner. But when I'm in training camp, I used to fly guys that, that has similar characteristic than my future opponent. And their job were to giving me a hard time. Their job was were to try to kick my butt in training. So training in training camp, for a training camp, it's not fun for me because it was about performance. Training when you're off season, it's fun because it's about pleasure, uh, learning new things. But definitely, I believe for longevity, you need to give yourself time to, for recuperation. Not to, be, not to be lazy, but to give yourself more time for recuperation sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got time for a couple more. We'll go over here first. What do you have, sir? Uh, so first off, just want to say John Anik, greatest announcer in sports. Thank you, buddy. Doesn't Thank matter you. the sport. Love you. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Second, my question is going to be for GSP and Chris Weidman. Um, so with Faraz Sahabi and John Danaher as your coaches, and then Ray Longo and um, Matt Serra as yours, what do you think has made them so successful over the past few years in MMA and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well when it comes to Danaher? Want me to go first? Uh, so Ray, Ray and Matt are completely different. Uh, Danaher is also a coach of mine. Uh, but I think what Ray's done really good to focus on him is getting to know his fighters in and outside the cage, have, forming like special bonds with the fighters where like you get to the point where you, you love him so much and the words that come out of his mouth mean so much. And if he believes in you, you want to prove him right when you walk into that octagon. Uh, and him and Matt just has a partnership with Matt's technical skills and the way he could amp you up. And with Longo, how he just creates this environment where you'll die for him. It's just really hard not to, you know, do well. And then just to piggyback with Danaher, Danaher just is a magician on the mat. Like, you know, he's created a system like we've never seen before. You know, I come from a wrestling background. There is no systems in that sport like there is with jujitsu, and it's really a testament to Danaher. So. To, for him to be in New York City my whole career, for me to be able to go inside, you know, you know, jump on a train and you know, head, on, head on over to the city was, was huge for me, to be able to get inside from him. Um, a few people knows this, but it's not everybody that knows that Firas and John are both, uh, they, they, they have, they're uh, 
They have diploma in uh, philosophy. John is a PhD in philosophy at uh, Columbia University. So he used to teach at Columbia. Columbia is a very high-end uh, uh, university. And I think one of the reasons why they are so good at teaching is because they, they use and they take their uh, academic experience that they got from philosophy and they bring it into uh, jiu-jitsu and mixed martial art. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it very much. All right, our final question. Mr. Irrelevant. Just kidding. What do you have? Appreciate that, John. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My question to all of you is, uh, George, you come from Canada. Chris, New York. Vitor, Brazil. Leoto, Brazil. What makes Florida so clearly like landslide, superior place to train and practice and overall perform MMA? Like, what makes it so dominant? And at least for America, if not the whole world. Because I see this as like East Vegas in the future. Vitor, why don't you lead us there? Because you were one of the first Brazilians that really made Florida a hotbed for MMA. We Brazilians say the best city of Brazil is Florida. Yep. <laughs> and I think it goes down to what the city offers. So no state, no state taxes here. So that's a great thing. I think we as a, as a citizen, see, we have to see we are being protected. Our rights being protected are not. I, you know, it's like this. I'll be honest. You can choose to like to do drugs, but don't make me this legal to do drugs. Don't make what you want be what I need. You know, so I say everybody has a free will to choose, but to live in society, you know, you guys know I'm not, I, like, I don't like to praise politicians, but DeSantis is the best guy. I'm sorry. That's why every New Yorker, Brazilian, Canadian, everybody's coming. You no, know, George's coming to a lot to Florida because here you got protected. We have, your rights are protected, and I think all you guys, we gotta have more UFC in Miami for sure. I want to fight in Miami. Leoto, how did you end up in California long term versus Florida? So when I first came to the U.S., I went straight to California, and I spent like eight year and a half over there. And three years ago, I decided to move to here, to Florida, because, because <laughs> this is the best state to live, man. You know? I love to be here. The weather, is, yeah, no tax. The weather is good. It's perfect. No mask. So I love California, but I prefer to be here. Well, I can't thank you all enough for the participation, for the energy. We got the weigh-in coming up in five minutes. But once before, a final hand for the legends, thank George St. Pierre, Chris Weidman, Vitor Belfort, and Leoto Machida. Thank you all. Plenty more to come today from Miami.